Okay, so we're going to take a look at definite integration. And um, we've already learned a little bit about integration. And we've been doing what we would call indefinite integration because we've not used any limits. But now we're going to start to look at a limit over our integration. And you'll see this notation. It gives us the x values in this case um, over which we will integrate. And theorem 4.4 tells us if a function f is continuous on this interval a, b, then f is integrable on a, b. And that is the integral of f of x dx from a to b exists. All right, so um, this is a little extra step in order for us to get to um, the answer. So if you're already comfortable with integration, then we're just going to add a little bit on to do definite integration. And this one says to do it by the limit definition. However, we've not really had uh, enough time to uh, go through all of that as we're approaching the end of the semester very quickly. So I'm not going to use the limit definition, and I will not test you on the limit definition um, for fall 2016. So we've got the integral of f of 4x squared dx. And so I'm going to integrate just like I would before. So I might bring my 4 out. We're still looking at the integral from 1 to 4 of x squared dx. And as we learned, this is going to be 4 times x cubed over 3. And when we're doing um, definite integration, we don't worry about the constant. Okay, As you'll see in just a second, um, we're going to end up subtracting. So if there was some arbitrary constant, it would cancel out. Um, and so we put our limits of integration now that we've already integrated on the right here from 1 to 4. Okay, so we want to evaluate. I've already integrated. Now I just need to evaluate this 4x cubed over 3. From 1 to 4. Okay, my lower limit of integration will always be the lesser value and the um, Upper limit is going to be the greater value. And of course, we're going to subtract the lower from the upper when we do our evaluation. So to evaluate this, I'm going to plug in 4 first. So it's 4 times 4 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 1 cubed over 3. Okay, and we end up with... 256 minus 4 over 3, or 252 over 3. Now, what is this integration used for? Um, well, one interpretation is the area of a region. Um, we can find the area of a region by integrating that function that describes the area and then using the, the um, limits of integration as you know part of the definition of our area. So it says here, if f is continuous, and non-negative on the closed interval a b then the area of the region bounded by the graph of f the x-axis and the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is 
the integral of f of x dx from a to b. All right, so um, again, this is just our area, and it's the same function that we were looking at just a second ago. So let's take a look at it. We're not going to do it yet. We just want to set up a definite integral that yields the area of the region that's described. Okay, so here we have f of x equals 4 over x squared plus 2. All right, and we want to find this area. So here's our function f of x, and notice that we're looking at it from negative 1 to 1. So in this case, the way that we would set up our integration would be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 4 over x squared plus 2 dx. All right, so if we could integrate that, then that would evaluate or find for us the area beneath the curve. Okay, over here, notice that y is our variable. So we're going to do our integration in terms of y. And if we look at the values that are covered for y, it starts at y equals 0, it goes up to y equals 2. So to find this area, we would say it's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of y minus 2 squared dy. All right, so here are a couple of properties of integration that we should be aware of. Uh, first of all, if f is defined at x equals a, then the integral from a to a of f of x dx equals 0. Okay, we're thinking about this as area. And, <clears throat> you know, in its simplest form, let's say we have a rectangle and we want it to integrate or evaluate the area from 5 to 5. Well, if that's what we're looking at, we really don't have a rectangle, right? In order for us to have area for the rectangle, we have to have both a width and a height or length. Um, and so if we go from A to A, then there's nothing there. So thinking of this again as area, the integral from A to A of f of x dx is going to be 0. Okay, if f is integrable on AB, then the integral of f of x dx from b to a is equal to negative integral of f of x dx from a to b. So this is really important because we need to make sure that we um, put our, our limits of integration in the correct order. Otherwise, you may come up with you know the negative answer when you should have had the positive. So when you're checking your homework, if uh, you see that your answer is the same as theirs, except you have a negative, you may have used your limits of integration in the wrong area. All right, so here's a little example, just a simple one. We've got the integral from 2 to 2 of x cubed dx. And because those limits are the same, we would say this is just zero. All right, if f is integrable on the three closed intervals determined by a, b, and c, where a is less than c is less than b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx can be broken up into two pieces of integration. Notice that c is a point in between. So we can look at the integral from a to c and then also from c to b. We can break it up that way. And just depending on what our function looks like, this may be useful for us as we uh, try to evaluate the integration or the area. All right, a couple more properties of integration. If f and g are integrable on a, b, and k is a constant, then the functions kf 
and f plus or minus g are integrable on a b and the integral of kf k f of x dx from a to b is equal to k times the integral of f of x dx from a to b so you saw me do that in the previous example um, i was able to factor out my constant and then we went on and integrated what was left also, uh, if we've got functions f of x plus or minus g of x, then we can distribute integration over a sum or a difference if we need to. Okay? All right, so we're given some values here, and we want to try to apply some of the properties that we just saw um, using these values. Okay, so we're given the integral from 2 to 4 of x cubed dx is equal to 60. The integral from 2 to 4 of x dx is equal to 6. And the integral from 2 to 4 of dx is equal to 2. Okay, so if I wanted to use those properties here, I would say I can factor out 25. I'm left with the integral from 2 to 4 of dx, or you can think of that as 1 dx, um, but however they gave me that value, okay, the value is actually 2, so we get 25 times 2, or 50. Okay, all right, here we're integrating um, 10 plus 4x minus 3x cubed dx from 2 to 4. Okay, so we can distribute our integration across this sum and difference. So we would get the integral from 2 to 4 of 10 dx plus the integral from 2 to 4 of 4x dx. And of course, I could bring that 4 to the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and write it as 4 times the integral of x dx. And we're still looking at this from 2 to 4. And then also, we're going to subtract 3 times the integral from 2 to 4 of x cubed dx. Okay, again, I was able to factor out or pull out that constant multiple outside of my integration. All right, so, and we could go on and pull out this 10 as well. Okay, if I did that, we'd be left with the integral of 10 dx, or rather uh, the integral of just dx. Let me rewrite this piece. So it's going to be 10 times the integral from 2 to 4 okay, of dx. Alright, so they tell us that the integral from 2 to 4 of dx is equal to 2. So we get 10 times 2. And then the integral of x dx from 2 to 4 is 6. So this is 4 times 6. Minus 3 times 60. Okay, so we've got 20 plus 24 minus 120. Okay, I believe that's going to give us 76, negative 76.
Okay, so here we have a couple of more evaluations we want to take a look at. Um, we've got these uh, given statements, the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx is equal to 4, and then the integral from 3 to 6 of f of x dx is equal to negative 1. So if I wanted to evaluate the integral from 0 to 6, I can break that up into two pieces. I can look at it from 0 to 3 of f of x dx, and then I can look at it from 3 to 6 of f of x dx. Okay, and so the integral from 0 to 3 is 4. We get that from our given information here. And then the integral from 3 to 6 is negative 1. So we get 3 altogether. All right, here we're looking at the integral from 3 to 6 of negative 5 f of x dx. Again, I can just pull that constant multiple out. And so we're looking at negative 5 times the integral from 3 to 6 of f of x dx. Or negative 5 times, we'll use the given information, the integral from 3 to 6 of f of x dx is negative 1. And so uh, negative 5 times negative 1 gave us positive 5. All right, here's another theorem, theorem 4.8. Uh, it says if f is integrable and non-negative on the closed interval a, b, then 0 is less than or equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So basically, it's telling us that when we do this integration, um, we should get a positive value, and that makes sense, or, or 0. Um, and that makes sense because we expect that area would be positive, okay? Also, it says if f and g are integrable on the closed interval a to b, and f of x is less than or equal to g of x for every x in a or b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is less than the integral of g of x dx from a to b, okay? So um, intuitively, what we're talking about is we've got two functions, Let's say this is g of x, and let's say this is f of x, all right? And we're talking about integration, thinking about it as the area beneath the curve. And so um, if f of x is always less than g of x, I'm going to expect that the area beneath f of x is less than the area beneath g of x. So we say the integral of f of x dx is less than the integral of g of x dx. And so that brings us to the fundamental theorem of calculus. And um, we've already taken a look at this in that earlier example. Um, it says, if a function f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and f is an antiderivative of f, so capital F, is an antiderivative of lowercase f on the interval a, b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is capital F of b minus capital F of a. All right, so we're going to, once we've integrated, we're going to be able to evaluate the integral at these limits by plugging in b and a and then subtracting. Okay, so... We want to evaluate the definite integral. All right, and I have the integral of minus 3 to 1 of 8 dt. And, of course, we know that the integral of 8 dt is 8t. 
all right and I'm gonna look at this from negative 3 to 1 okay and so we look at 8 times 1 minus 8 times negative 3 And we get 8 plus 24 or 32. Alright, here we have the integral of 6x squared minus 3x dx from 1 to 2. So when I integrate, I get 6x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 and then we're going to evaluate this from 2 to 1. or rather from 1 to 2. Okay, we can clean this up a little bit if we need to. We've got 2x cubed minus 3 halves x squared. From 1 to 2. All right, so first I'm going to plug in 2. If I plug in 2, 2 to the 4th power is 16 minus 3 halves times 4 is 6. Okay, that's just from plugging in 2. All right, and then from here I'm going to subtract what I get when I plug in 1. So when we plug in 1, we get 2 minus 3 halves. Okay, so that gives me 10 minus 1 half or 9 and a half, we'd call that 19 halves. Nineteen halves. Okay, let's take a look at another example. We've got the integral from minus 2 to minus 1 of u minus 1 over u squared. Of course, we might rewrite this as u minus u to the negative 2 du. And when I integrate, we're going to get u squared over 2 minus, if I add 1, we get u to the negative 1, and we would divide by negative 1, so that means this thing becomes plus, okay? And we want to uh, evaluate this from negative 2 to negative 1. Yeah, of course u to the negative 1 is 1 over u. So we get, when I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is going to give me 1 half. And then um, we're looking at this as 1 over u. So that's going to be plus negative 1, right? Okay, minus, when I plug in negative 2, Negative 2 squared is 4, so we get 4 halves, okay, and then 1 over u would give me 
plus negative one half. Okay, and we're subtracting all of this, so let's be careful with that. And so we get one half minus one is going to give me negative one half. Okay, and then we have four halves minus one half that gives me three halves. So negative one half minus three halves gives me negative four halves or just negative two. All right, let's try one more. We've got the integral from 1 to 8 of the square root of 2 over x dx. Or the integral from 1 to 8 of 2 over Let's do 2x to the negative 1. To the 1 half dx. Okay, to evaluate this, um, let's distribute the exponent. We can do that. So we'll get the integral. from 1 to 8 of 2 to the 1 half, or that's just the square root of 2, times x to the negative 1 half dx. Okay, I distributed my exponent because I can distribute an exponent over a product. Okay, so that's what we did. So now we're looking at the integral, or uh, square root of 2 times the integral from 1 to 8 of x to the minus 1 half dx. And so now we can say it's the square root of 2 times x to the positive 1 half divided by positive 1 half, or that would have been times 2. And we're going to evaluate this from 1 to 8. Okay, so we've got root 2 times 2 x to the 1 half. All right, so if I plug in 8, we get 2 root 2 times 8 to the 1 half, or that's going to be the square root of 8. We'll come back and evaluate that in just a second. And minus 2 root 2 times 1 to the 1 half, which of course is just 1. All right, so 8 does have a perfect square in it is 4 times 2. So if I look at this as the square root of 8, the square root of 8 is equal to 2 root 2. Okay, so we've got 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. Okay, that's going to give me 4 times 2, or 8. Okay, minus 2 root 2. So we'll just say 8 minus 2 square root of 2.
Okay, let's look at this example where we want to find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of the equations. And so here are our equations, y equals x cubed plus x, x equals 2, and y equals 0, which is our x-axis. So it would be helpful if we could take a look at um, what this region looks like. So I've already done a graph of it. And here is the function y equals x cubed plus x. Here is uh, x equals 2. And of course, this is our y-axis. So when we talk about the region um, that's bounded by these functions, we're looking at all of this region. Okay. And let's, um, I should have scrolled up before I did that. Okay, you can even see that at some point, you know, those two, the x equals 2 and y equals x cubed, they come together. So we have a nice closed region here um, that we're trying to find the area for. Okay, but more importantly, what we need to know is, okay, well, what are those limits of integration? From which x value to which other x value do I need to integrate this function? Okay, because we're trying to find the area beneath this curve. And so for this region, we can see it goes from 0 to 2. So the integration that I'm going to perform is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of x cubed plus x dx. Or we get x to the fourth over 4 plus x squared over 2. And we want to evaluate all of this from 0 to 2. Okay, so when I plug in 2, I get 16 over 4, or just 4, plus 2. Okay, that's what I get when I plug in 2. Minus, when we plug in 0, we actually get just 0. So our answer comes up to be 6. All right, let's try one more. We've got y equals 1 minus x to the fourth um, and y equals 0. Okay, so this one's, let's take a look at it on our graph if we can. Okay, y equals 1 minus x to the fourth. Okay. All right, and y equals 0. Okay, so here's our graph. All right, and so we can see that the area that we're really interested in is right in here. Okay, we want to look at the area that's bound by y equals 0, which is the x-axis, and this particular curve. So this is the area that we're looking at. Um, now, what are the limits of integration? Okay, well, there are a couple of ways that we could do this. I mean, obviously, we can, you know, try to use a graph, but if I want to know where y equals 1 minus x to the fourth meets up with y equals 0, then what we could have done was said 0 equals 1 minus x to the fourth and solve. And so we would get x to the fourth equals 1. And if we take the fourth root of that, then that gives us x equals plus or minus 1. Remember, when we take those even roots, we have to do plus or minus. And we can see that on this graph that um, the, the x values that define this area are 1, negative 1, and positive 1. So when I do my integration...
we're going to integrate from minus 1 to plus 1 of 1 minus x to the fourth dx. Okay, and of course that's going to be x minus x to the fifth over 5. And we're evaluating all of this from minus 1 to 1. Okay, if I plug in 1, I get 1 minus 1 fifth. And if I plug in negative 1, we get negative 1 minus negative 1 fifth. And so when I do that, I got 4 fifths, okay, minus, okay, minus 1 plus negative uh, 1 fifth, or rather, minus 1 plus 1 fifth, that would give me minus 4 fifths. Okay, and then of course, when we add these two together, we get positive 8 fifths. All right, so let's shift gears a little bit and talk just about um, one other thing in this section. And that is uh, average value of a function on an interval. This is actually um, the last SLO question that we have not attempted. And so, um, you know, make sure you go back and look at that SLO question um, as it relates to what we're going to discuss here. But it says definition of the average value of a function on an interval. If f is integrable on the closed interval a to b, then the average value of f on the interval is 1 over b minus a. So that, that b minus a gives us the width of the interval. And then we're going to integrate from a to b of f of x dx. OK, so let's see if we can apply that here. OK, we want to find the average value of the function over the given interval. And all values of x in the interval for which the function equals its average value. OK. All right, so a couple of things we need to do here. But first of all, let's find that average value. And so uh, we saw that the average value is equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Or for us, that's going to be 1 over 3 minus 1 times the integral from 1 to 3 of 4x squared plus 1 over x squared. All right, so taking a look at this first, we have to, of course, integrate. And just taking a look at this, um, you know, I can see that U substitution is not going to work, so I can always drop back and actually distribute this denominator. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to factor out that 4. I can bring this 4 outside of my integration, so it'll become my numerator now. And then, of course, 3 minus 1 is 2, and we're integrating 1 to 3, and I'm going to distribute x squared to each of these. So x squared over x squared is 1, and then 1 over x squared, I'm going to write that as plus x to the negative 2 dx. Okay, of course, 4 halves is just 2, and now I'm ready to actually integrate. We get x plus x to the negative 1 over 
negative 1. And we're going to evaluate that from 1 to 3. Of course, we can clean that up a little bit. We've got 2 times x. This is going to be minus 1 over x. from 1 to 3 or 2 times when I plug in 3 we get 3 minus 1 third and then when we plug in um, 1 we're going to subtract 1 minus 1 Okay, we get 1 here, and we get 1 over 1, so that's why we have minus 1. So 3 minus 1 third, I can think of 3 as 9 thirds. So 9 thirds minus 1 third, that gives me 8 thirds. Okay, times 2, so we get 16 thirds is our average value. Okay, let's look at one last example, um, and actually a slightly different application. Theorem 4.12 uh, is the net change theorem, and it says the definite integral of the rate of change of quantity f prime of x gives the total change or net change in that quantity on the interval a to b. Um, so that is the integral from a to b of f prime of x d of x is equal to f of b minus f of a. So what we see here is at uh, 1 p.m. oil begins leaking from a tank at a rate of 4 plus 0.75 t. Um, so what they've given us is a rate of change. All right. And now what they want to know is not just the changes in the rate, but they actually want to know how much oil is lost. And we can find that using this net change theorem. So we're just going to integrate the rate of change that they gave us and then evaluate using those limits. All right, so I'm going to look at the integral of the rate of change, which was 4 plus 0.75t dt. And we're going to look at that for part A from 1 until 4. And so we get 4t plus 0.75t squared over 2. And we want to look at this from... 1 to 4. So if we plug in 4, we get 16 plus 6 Okay, punch that in your calculator. Make sure you get 6 when you plug in 4 here. Minus 4 plus 0.75 is 3 fourths times 1 half. So that's going to give me 3 eighths. So we've got 22 minus... 35 eighths okay and then subtract that and that gives you your answer okay we would do the same thing here um, except if we want to know how much oil was lost from 4 to 7 then our limits of integration would be from 4 
to seven. So do that one and see which answer uh, you get.